Hi, Rob Star here. In this video, we're gonna be setting the animations for our enemy. Last episode, we set up the pathfinding, and today let's set up the animations. It's pretty straightforward, so let's just get into it. First of all, let's go into the player's scene, and we're gonna add an animated sprite to the node. Let's select it, and let's create new sprite frames. And let's name the first one idle. Since the slime animations we are going to be using, uh, I'll just show you here, don't have directional sprites. That means you have to like work around with it. It just have one direction sprites, so it doesn't have vertical sprites. Another tip I would just want, like to give you is that if you're creating an enemy that is guided by the navigation system, you should not constrain it to horizontal or vertical movement. What I mean is sometimes people want the enemy to move, not move in diagonals, but we want our enemy to move in diagonals. Because if you try to constrain it, it will look kind of weird. So that's just a little tip I gave you. Let's set up the animations and I'm gonna set the collision shape. Let's create the run animation. What we are going to do is we're just going to flip the sprites for horizontal axis like left and right and for vertical up, uh, axis the since it's a slime it'll look pretty okay uh, once we'll play the animations it'll look really good even if it's working uh, walking in the vertical axis it'll look pretty fine okay now since we have the animation set up now let's just head it into the code uh, what we're going to do is we're going to check for if the player is moving. Uh, should we just create a function for checking if we are moving or not? Or should we just create a state of function and just checking? Uh, I think we should just like create a function for animating just like we did for the player and just add the code in there. I think that'll be pretty fine. Let's just delete this function, I think. Uh, let's create a new function. F U N C func that's the keyboard for creating a new function. Uh, we're going to name it animate. You can name it anything. Uh, let's create a variable uh, for checking if we are moving. Make, uh, keep in mind that this variable can only be used inside this function. This is the scope of the variables. By the way, I'm planning to make a full-fledged video on variables. Uh, so if you are up to that, you can find the link to it in the description if it's out. And we're gonna, what we're going to check is the velocity. What we're going to check if the player is moving based on the velocity. If the velocity is not zero, that means it's it's walking. That's just a simple logic we can apply. For that, we're just going to pass this function so we can handle with the errors. And you can see that we cannot say 0, 0.0 because it's a float and velocity is a vector 2.0. I mean, it's a vector 2. So we're going to check for a vector 2.0 which means that it's a vector 2 value, but it's just a 0. That means that a player isn't moving. So we can just check if it's greater than vector 2.0. That means if it's something like it's moving, we can set the is moving to true. Else, like if there's any other value than that, then it should be moving. Uh, I think uh, greater than will be actually not fine. We should use not equal to 0 point, uh, vector 2.0. We'll just fix that in a bit. So we're going to check if we are moving. So then we're going to then check if we are the velocity, the velocity dot x. That means the horizontal velocity. I think just to fix it, uh, the exc exclamation mark and equal means that it's not equal to vector 2.0. It means it's something because the position can be minus and positive. So if it's greater than, then it's gonna not going to count the negative values. If you have trouble figuring out which is left, which is, what is right in the horizontal axis, you can just go to the transform and like move it around. And check it I always do that because I just forgot okay uh, and after, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check if velocity is greater than zero then I, I don't know 
I don't know if this is going to be opposite directions. Let's just set up the animations and then we'll check if we are doing the right directions. So we're going to play the run animation and you can just use the reference again. But I think creating a variables is is a pretty good call. And uh, I think Gido really likes it because it gives you the uh, properties options better when you like store the reference in a variable. You can just drag it in the editor and hold control while leaving it so it will just create a reference directly i'm going to name it anim and let's let's play the animation run and horizontal flip by using flip h and yeah that's it so yeah that's okay uh the flip doesn't matter so either you can check here up here for greater or lesser or you can just flip the sprite uh, if you have trouble you can just uh, i'm pretty sure you can't understand what i'm saying so let's just continue now let's copy over the code and this time we're gonna flip the sprite to false since there's no vertical <laughs> sprites we're gonna just ignore that stuff because we're gonna set up the horizontal sprites nothing else matters and yes that's an else that means if we are not moving, we're just going to play the idle animation. Since it's going to flip in the move function, don't need to flip and stuff here. And most of the time, it doesn't really use idle animations. It's just constantly moving. We're going to set up the range and stuff later. Uh, you can see that no animations are playing because we don't call the function. Yeah, that's an oopsie I always make. And yeah, it's flipped. Uh, I don't know where I make the mistake. Either you can just uh, reverse the flipping or just this greater than and lesser than. I'm just going to change greater than and lesser than. Uh, programming code number one, if it works, just go with it. I don't know if the logic is right or not. It's working and nothing else matters. And we got player animations.